Hello, everyone. Welcome to, to Coffee, Tea, You and Me today. This is Coach Powell coming to you live from my studio right here in my basement in Centerville, Virginia. I am looking forward to spending time with you guys today, sharing amazing information about some of the great things we got going on here. Um, I don't know what's going on with my phone right now, but I'm going to turn it off and down. Oh, it's actually registering that this is happening. Uh, great for you guys to, to come on board. I hope you guys are having a great time today. Um, we are going to be talking about what it takes to really, really understand and use um, the environmental resources that you have available to make sure that you are prepared for whatever happens in your business, in your life, whatever. You need an emergency disaster plan. You need a, a scenario where you can uh, come out shining no matter what happens to the political, economic, social environments that happen around us. We're gonna be chopping it up, asking the hard questions and really beating up the ideas. And I hope that some of you on our studio audience will weigh in about what your thoughts are on the on the matter. I know for a fact that many of us may get, our, get, uh, get caught off guard when the pandemic like happens or something happens in the environment, whether it's a social thing or an economic thing or, or whatever. And sometimes we're just not prepared. And small businesses really, really, cannot afford to take the risk of, of basically getting caught with their pants down um, in the wrong situation at the wrong time. And so I remember earlier in my um, career with uh, working with small businesses for the Small Business Commission at Fairfax County, I remember uh, looking at our emergency response procedures that we had put in place for uh, small businesses. And I realized that those emergency response uh, situations were really only designed in case of a national emergency, like a flood or a fire or a major electrical outage or something would happen and it would be a, a tremendous earthquake or something like that, you know, or, or even war in, in the area. Um, and I realized that those procedures that are put in place, most of the entrepreneurs, most of the business leaders don't even know what's available to them in their local environment. So. I'm going to ask you all right now, all over the world, all over the place you are, look into your local government systems and ask, is there a small business readiness plan for the businesses in your area? Because I promise you, they've probably already thought about something that's going to help you be more responsive just in case the just in case happens. And that's what you're going to want to have. That's what you're going to have to survive whatever downturn there may be. And we're going to get into some ideas and some ways for you to consider thinking about those kinds of downturns and all that kind of stuff today. Um, we have um, ended, we're going to be ending today with the, the five elements of the True Voice program. And originally the True Voice program was designed simply as a series of questions. It was 14 to 16 questions that I created just to help people begin to understand one another, truly understand one another. Because I know that it's impossible for people to collaborate. It's impossible for people to, to fully engage and to fully give each other their best if they don't take the time to understand. If they don't take the time to listen, to inquire, and to understand what each other's up to, where you, what you have to offer, what you bring to the table, if, even more so than what maybe your business is. You as a character, as a person, have a contribution to make to the world, to our society. And the question it remains is, are you good at articulating what that thing is? Are you good at articulating what your purpose is? Can you come up with the goods? And do you know how to get better at whatever that is so that you can grow emotionally, socially? Um, can you take the gifts that you've been given and do even better with them? That's really what this is all about to make sure that nothing stands in your way of doing that. And that's today's training module. It's li literally understanding that last section of True Voice, which is about the environment. Now we talked in, a, in the previous weeks about every section of True Voice. What is your vision? How do you look at it? What, where, how do you know you're gonna get to where you wanna be, uh, where you wanna do, what you wanna have? Then we talked about um, the obstacles that you might face, what kind of things that you may need to do. How do you turn those obstacles into challenges? And how do you recognize which obstacles, obstacles are there for you to turn back from? And we talked about that. Then we talked about, you know, the, uh, your instinct and how you use your intuition and your insight to really push forward 
on any of the major ideas that might affect you achieving or getting close to achieving your vision, right? And then we talked about your commitments. How do you make commitments? How do you know the right commitments to make? How do you make adjustments to the commitments you've already made when you when you've overcommitted? You know, we went through all of that, and then today we're going to talk about the environment. How do you look at your environment? How do you measure your environment? How do you begin to understand how to use your environment effectively? And how do you make sure that you're doing the best you can with um, and, be, and you're ready for whatever disaster may come? Um, now, right now, we've got a, a pending recession. Now, I say pending because no one wants to say formally we are in a recession, but all of the economic indicators that would indicate that we are in a recession are actually in play right now. So I'm going to declare we are in a recession. And what that means to small businesses is uh, traumatic. It could, it could be it could be devastating for small businesses who are just trying to crawl back from the pandemic. And now here we are. We're going to go. We're going to go into a recession right now. So think about that. What's that going to mean to your business? What does, what's that going to mean to your organization? And if you look at the training modules that I have posted, if you're on Facebook or on YouTube, you can see those training modules. And if you're on LinkedIn, you probably can't see them. So what I'm going to do is go over there and make sure that you have it posted. And I'm going to do that while we are going into our, our break. When we come back from our break, that should be posted or on LinkedIn and everything should be fine and dandy. Okay. All right, boys and girls, I just posted uh, that comment over in, over in LinkedIn. So if you're watching this LinkedIn live, check out the comment section and you'll be able to download today's training module. I see that it's already there and we are rocking and rolling. OK, here we go. Today's program is super special. Um, we're going to be talking about the environment, how you look at the environment and what the environment means, uh, the different sections and elements of the environment that you have to consider. And I want you to start off right up front, let me try to get this right, right up front with a couple questions. And I want you to think about these questions. Question number one, do you have a well-written, brilliantly articulated plan in case of emergencies that will help your business thrive whenever the inevitable happens? Because the inevitable is going to happen, right? Question number two, what political forces could negatively impact your ability to thrive in your chosen marketplace. Something could happen. Some election could happen. Some drastic changes could be made politically that might cause you to have you know, some problems, right? Are you recession proof? Economically, you know, what could happen to the labor market? What can happen to the prices of goods and services? What can happen to the rate of inflation that will make you change how you do business or not do business at all, but will be devastating to you when it comes to that kind of stuff? What do you spend money on right now? If the prices were to go up, then you may have to adjust your prices for your customers. And if you adjust your prices for the customers, maybe you dial completely out of that market, right? You got to think about that. Are you recession proof? Do you know how to handle a recession? Are you ready? Um, next question is, what kind of cultural shifts might impair your suppliers or your workforce? What kind of things would make it difficult for your workforce to come to work or for you to do the job that you're trying to do? If you're a solopreneur and you do everything pretty much, what would make it difficult for you to do all of um, culturally what would make it difficult for you to do all the things you need to do in your business? What technical leaps could be made that will destroy your ability to target, to focus, to maximize the benefit of your target market? What niches are you? do you need to explore that you can't explore if, if you don't have the right technology or if your technology isn't working or is no longer functional because you're using old outdated equipment or, or, or software or hardware? That's the question. How long can you survive a business downturn of any type? 
how long before you have to quit, before you no longer have what it takes to reinvest and to retool and to modernize and to come back better, stronger, faster than you were before? Where is the shift in the legislative landscape that will have you have to be really challenged? Is there an is there something that might happen legally that will make it very difficult for you? You know, any municipality you work in will all, can always raise your taxes. They can always change and redistrict your area um, so that the zoning or so that uh, the things that that really work to support your business no longer work because they have eminent domain. So what's to stop them from doing that? What's to stop them from you know, turning the name of your street around and making it a new name and you having to change your address on everything that you did, everything that registered to you, you have to fix that, right? That's a, co that's a cost. Think about that. These are things and there's a system that I suggest you use to really, really, really look at the environment. And on page four of our document, the system is called PESL. PESL is a acronym. Is, is P E S T L E. The acronym stands for political, economic, techno technology, social, legal, and environmental. These are all the various key aspects of our total environment that affect who we are, what we do, and how we do business. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, you are affected by the environment that you are in. It has an impact on you. But that's not the, the only story, though, um, because you also have an impact on the environment as a person living, breathing, talking, walking, whatever you're doing, whatever, whatever contributions you're making. All of that impacts the environment in some way. What is your what is your level of impact and can you strengthen your level of impact along with you and the people that love and care about you? along with people that are in your business, a lot of people that are, are functioning around you, maybe your referral sources, maybe your um, suppliers, maybe your advisory council or your, your business council, whoever you're working with on a consistent, regular basis, these people are stakeholders in your success. And so therefore, a part of the responsibility for your business to flourish rests on them. It's not all, all onto you. The beneficiaries, of course, have something to say, have something to contribute. Maybe that could be useful to you, especially in the case of an emergency. So let's get into it. At the top of our document, you're going to find that I've answered the last two true voice questions. These are the questions that uh, these are my answers to the questions. And I think it's very important that you see these answers especially because not just because I want you to get to know me, but these are the kinds of answers that you're going to have to think about deeply in response to these questions. And when you are talking to someone else and someone else asks you, you know, hey, what could affect your business and, and what things do you have to watch out for? This will give you information to help you arm yourself. There's also, and, and, and not just arm yourself, but to speak about it. Because if you can speak about a pending problem, out there in the universe, what tends to happen is people who hear it have the opportunity to respond. People who hear it have the opportunity to say, you know what, I know somebody who can help you with that. You know what, I think I can help you with that. You know what, that's a shame that this is happening to you. You might want to think about pivoting into this area or that area or thinking about some other things. But it starts a conversation, a dialogue that's going to help not hinder you. A lot of people don't want to um, share these kinds of details. They want to hold this information close to the cuff. But this is stuff that affects us all. And so your ability to come together and create resources for one another can be perfect. Let me give you a perfect example. In Hurricane Katrina, the people who were largely affected by that tremendous loss of life and property, people could have come together in neighborhoods and cells and bought boats invested in something they could put in somebody's backyard and just waited for the water to rise. If they couldn't escape any other way, they could have bought boats, covered the boats, the boats would rise, they could just jump in the boat with their last 
the possessions or whatever that is and float right away, survive. It can happen. Because boats don't fill up even as fast as you can bail them out. You understand that, right? As long as there, as long as there's no leak in the boat, you can continue to bail out that boat. And it was it was even the heaviest rainstorm. As long as it's not waves toppling and all that kind of stuff, you can survive. Especially a nice sized boat that would fit maybe ten to fifteen people. So think about it. Even a even a even a blow up raft could have worked. People had invested. The community could have invested in a blow up raft. But that would mean them thinking through thinking about it, having the information, and coming through with an opportunity to save themselves, not depending on the government. Story I'm going to tell you a little later on. I'm going to tell you right now. During Katrina, one of the major disasters was people depended completely and thoroughly on government agencies. The state, the local, and the federal government, everybody dropped the ball. Because they were all listening to the Army Corps of Engineers. And the Army Corps of Engineers said, yes, the, the, the levees are old. They're very old. And they do need to be updated. However, they're probably not going to fail more than what more than anything else. What will happen is some water will come over the top of the levees. So the damage will be minimal. Even if there's some damage or some flooding, that could happen. But the damage will be minimal. That's basically what the Army Corps of Engineers told the legislators and FEMA and everybody else, you know, they said yeah, it's it's a problem, but it's not a significant enough problem that it could cause a total break. What even they did not know was that the foundations of the levees were so poorly built in the first place and they had shifted and things had happened in the environment over the 100 years they were up and running that would cause those levees to fail, not just waters coming over the top of the levees, but to absolutely fail. And then that just opened up the whole the, the whole floodplain. It had made everything, everything below sea level got flooded. And that's what happened in Hurricane Katrina. Now, it just so happened that the laws previous to all this allowed certain communities to be built right underneath sea level, right underneath those levees. You can guess that those were the poorest communities in all of New Orleans. The wealthier communities in New Orleans were above sea level. They had minimal damage as compared to those that were in the Ninth Ward, the Fifth Ward, the Seventh Ward of New Orleans. So think about that. How much does our government actually prepare us? How much do they actually have plans in place that will be effective in the case of a real emergency? Can you weather the storm? Do you have what it takes to keep your livelihood functioning? Can you even thrive necessarily in a, in a, in a horrible situation? And in what situations could you thrive? You need to ask yourself the questions. So the questions I have here in, in the True Voice module are, are this one, these ones. What are the larger uncontrollable components of your life that can be can, that can affect how you make decisions? And then I have a breakdown of some of those things, right? So you know, no, largely I already talked talk to you about the PESO model. If you look at this thing from a political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental concern, um, and you look at all those areas, all six of those areas, you're going to come up with different answers. You know, you're going to come up with different answers about how you could be affected. And those are my answers. There's an example um, if you have it there. Right. One of the answers I say, I think it's bullet point number four or the fourth bullet point down on the third on 13. People will always learn and grow. But these needs can shift dramatically with when large cultural changes happen. You know, large cultural change in America. Black Lives Matter had people people coming to the streets. Right. Uh, and wanting and demanding changes in corporate policies and changes in governmental policies and regulations. And those regulations are put in effect, right? All this BPOC stuff, right? People wanting to learn how to work with um, underrepresented markets and underrepresented people and learning how to include them into the discussion of how they're going to do whatever they're going to do. Because we're moving, right? We're moving from a, a, a homogenous social structure to a more diverse one, and it's global. 
whether we want to or not, whether we're trying to hold back it, hold, hold it back or not, this is a happening. It's a happening because the population grows and population shifts and people are becoming more educated at, in, in levels that they have never had before. And women are coming out like crazy, you know, um, with new ideas and new thoughts about how things should be done. And they vote. All those changes are making and minorities vote and disabled people vote, and the LGBTQIA community vote, and everybody everybody has got you know a say-so, especially in America in this great so-called democracy. No matter how much you try to hold it back, the people are going to find a way because the, the government system is made for the people to find a way to self-govern. So think about that. You know, these things are these cultural shifts are going to happen. They're not a function of when or, or they're already happening and they're going to continue to happen. We just instituted the, the the we just brought Katanji Brown. I, I never thought we'd have a name a lady named Katanji Brown on the Supreme Court. And I know she's a sister, right? <laughs> never thought that would happen. But think about it. It's gonna happen again. It's gonna happen more and more. We're gonna have more soda mayors. You know, we're gonna have more Revis. We're gonna have more people. You know, at the at the highest and the highest uh, authority uh, over our legal structures in the land. How's that gonna affect our culture? How's it going to affect the society? Because this will have an effect. How's it going to affect your business? And you got to think about these things because a negative effect on your business might cause your business to actually close. And big corporations might be able to do that. You know, they might be able to just board it up and wait for the riot to be over, <laughs> right? But your smaller businesses may not be may, may not be able to afford to be shut down or closed. But you got to think about it. What is your emergency disaster plan? In my world, there's a thing called SCORM. And SCORM is the actual regulation or supposed regulation that dictates how training and uh, training is to be developed throughout the world. It's the global standard. Right. So if you're going to develop training, especially digital training or, or modern training, webinars and those, those type of things, which I do. Not understanding how SCORM works is a detriment to my business. I need to understand how it works. I need to understand, you know, how to use it, how to how to speak to all the various tools and aspects of it. Right. Same thing for Section 504. I have to know how to make sure that the, the information that I'm sharing is available and might be or will be available to those that have various forms of disabilities. Because if not, I'll be out of compliance with you know, HUD regulations and other other things, other regulatory organizations. Now, I know the Supreme Court just put some stuff in that will make those regulations pretty difficult for, you know, to have to come down on, you know, a small businesses. But think about it. The culture is going in the direction. And the regulations can be changed, just like they've been changed. But, you know, in one way, they'll be changed in another way. And do you want your business subject to these changes that you don't even have a clue that's happening. So you got to stay informed. You got to stay involved. right? You got to stay on top of things. Number 14, what changes have to be made to the current environment to facilitate movement on your objectives? Sometimes the environment itself is standing in the way of you making the, the gains and having the opportunities that you need to have. You know, if you need to take a course and it's only offered um, at a certain school at a certain time of day, and you can't get there because you've got a full-time gig that's a lot, that's making you do whatever you have to do, you'll never be able to get that course. If that course is not going to ever be offered online, it's not going to be ever offered at a time where you can take it or you have enough energy to even, you know, use the information and grasp the information so that you can pass the final exam. All of this has to work well in order for the growth and development to happen. Um, so, you, so you can move from this thing to that thing, whatever the things you're trying to do, but you gotta be available. You have to be willing um, to do the work, whatever that work is. If that work is your time management skills, if that work is your ability to study, if that work is your ability to energy so that you can stay up late at night. All these things are important. And these are things that will, environmental things, do you, you really can't change too much of the environmental things, but you got to be asking yourself the question. You know, a lot of times we will move to a house or to an area that we can afford. Barely. 
and that place is in a food desert, so to speak. So we can't get any good food. So now we're living in a place of misery and woe, <laughs> right? We can't get access to good food or health care or anything else. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're sick and we're lonely and we're isolated and it's not working well because this is what we can afford. But this is an environmental thing, right? If 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 the minimum wage was a living minimum wage in the area that you lived in, then maybe you could afford to have a place next to a Whole Foods and a you could have a car or have public transportation right in your back backyard, easy to get to, so that you can move around and that you can experience some things in life. Take a break if you want to. Go to work, <laughs> you know, whatever I need you to do. These things are all environmental things that you have to think about. So even in my uh, answers to the questions, I have um, things like um, uh, making sure that people who are, are SWAM friendly get, get, get elected to uh, support anything that I want to support, right? So if I know these are the things that I'm into, and I'm into small women-owned and minority-owned businesses, flat out, want to work with them, want to help them, want to advocate for them, want to push for their survival and push for them to thrive. That's what I want to do. That's what I'm all about. That's what I focus on when it comes to uh, uh, my contribution to the fourth of human history and my contribution to the economy, the global economy. It's going to be a, a small business contribution. I already know that, right? So that means if I'm smart, I'm at least going to make sure in my local, regional, national politics, I try to vote for people support the voting of people who are small business friendly. People who are only talking about tax and corporations and all that kind of stuff, that's a great thing. I'm not, I'm not mad at, you know, um, at, at, at having everybody pay their fair share, but I do want small businesses to have every advantage. And I want them to have no hurdles to their success because I realize that 99.9% .9 of all businesses are small business. That's a fact. And there are a lot of people out there that, you know, although we depend on the big corporations, we really do. Um, the small businesses are the engine that runs our American economy and the global economy, quite frankly. Um, and they're not always doing well. They're mostly just limping along. Some are doing exceptionally well, but I want those who, I want none to be limping along. I want all to be doing exceptionally well. Because that's to me is how we take advantage of this great American so-called freedom we have, right? We take take advantage of um, the opportunities that are in our marketplace. So I know some of you all been maybe maybe came in and maybe see this for the first time. I really like for you to introduce yourself if you can. Put your name and number in the chat. Let us know who you are, where you're coming from, any comments that you may have, any questions that you may have. Um, phenomenally interested in in any of that. So if you're there out there. You want to introduce yourself, introduce your business to anyone. That'd be great. I see my girl Tiffany Campbell's in the house. I see you out there, Tiffany. Where's Tiff Tiffany's on YouTube, I think. Tiffany, do me a favor. Introduce yourself in the chat if you're still paying attention, if you're listening. I uh, really appreciate that. Uh, let us know where you are, where you're coming from, how you found us. Uh, any ideas you have about um, any topics that we're discussing, jump right in. We're just discussing small business and how you get along. Yeah, everything you sh everything you want to find is already in the chat in terms of the documentation that we're using. And I'm going to go back to our training module here in just a second. Um, for me, the reason why I, I, I'm really talking about this today because I had a wake up call. When 9-11 happened, I was stuck. I was in an appointment with a friend um, and my wife called me on my cell phone. I took the call because I always you know, make sure that I keep my phone on um, just in case you know the boss calls. So I called, I took the phone. She said, uh, Marvin, a plane just flew into the World Trade Center. Now, being a former New Yorker, you know, I was there when a biplane hit the Trade Center years ago. And I was like, OK, a small little plane hit. I, I didn't think it was a commercial airliner. I immediately, my brain, you know, take, this is the problem, right? My brain immediately went to, hey, it's no big deal. Um, my wife is an alarmist. She, you know, she's you know, she, she calls fatal when everything, anything happens in the house. The sky's always falling, chicken little, that whole nine yards. And so I brushed it off and blew it off. I was when I was uh, in a meeting 
with a friend of mine. And I thought this this is not this is not going to be a problem. Um, this is not an issue. Um, it's in New York City, and it's a plane hit the New York City. I had no idea it was a commercial airliner. It was wrong, all, all kinds of wrong. Made all kinds of the wrong assumptions, made all kinds of the wrong exceptions, and thought completely wrong. This is what ignorance will do for you, right? By the time I got the word that the second plane hit the second trade, World Trade Center, and the first World Trade Center had come down, I realized this was a bigger deal. And I also got the word that the Pentagon had been um, approached and there was a plane that flew into the Pentagon. I was like, oh, my God, this is a national. This is an attack. At that point, I tried to call my wife back (laughs) to see where she was. And she was unreachable. She was unreachable because she's probably one of the first people that left the Library of Congress that day. But one of the reasons why she was unreachable because the phones were down. All of a sudden, the cell phones were so overflooded with calls that nobody could get in contact with anybody, no matter how hard I tried. I came home. I even tried the the, the regular phone in, in our apartment. That didn't work. So I was stuck. I didn't know what was going on. Last I heard from my wife was a message that said, OK, I'm leaving the Library of Congress and I'm trying to get on a train. That was like two hours You know, before I pushed the panic button. I went to get my daughter, picked her up from the daycare, Realized that no one in the daycare knew what was going on. I was the only adult that was close by enough to come by, swoop up their kid, and I had to get that kid. So I couldn't get I couldn't get to my wife. I didn't know where she was. So at least I did know. I knew where my kid was. So I went and got her, and I had her right with me. But I was panicked. I was upset. I was nervous. I didn't know where anybody was. I had family members in the city. I had family members in, in the Pentagon. I had people all over the place that I knew. I didn't know. The, then, the, then we heard the thing the a plane landed in in Pennsylvania. I was like, okay, this is, I don't know where this is going to go. This is a, I don't know how many more planes there are out there. They're going to fall down, whether there's some bombs are going to follow. I totally was caught off guard. And it wasn't until six o'clock that night, I was able to hear from my wife who was stuck in a train station because the train stopped moving because it was overcrowded and probably weren't ready, wasn't ready to handle all that um, pressure. The system wasn't ready to handle the pressure of everybody trying to escape the city at the same time. Um, So it was very difficult. But finally, I I, I was able to, you know, strap Kayla in the backseat and go pick her up. Um, And then we had the the, all the roads were all closed down and all messed up. So it was very difficult to get home because it wasn't just a rush hour. It was a mega rush hour. We were even considering we pulled off to go to a restaurant. I remember that we were actually considering uh, just check it into a hotel um, and just wave the thing out. But we decided it probably be get just in case it kept coming, probably need to get home, which is what we did. So the point of it all is if you're not prepared for an emergency, if you're not prepared for a disaster, you know, it could be disastrous. It could be impossible. And there's some things that you got to do. There's some things you got to really think through and you got to analyze and really think about how this could affect my family, my business and those around me. Because none of us are in this thing by ourselves. The environment affects us all. If you don't listen to anything and we're talking about in, in today's topic, listen to that. Because the environment affects us all. It's all our responsibilities to respond well when the worst happens and we have to be ready. But we can't be ready if we're ignorant. We can't be ready if we don't have, like I said earlier, a well-written, well-articulated plan of execution that we can handle in any of the various types of emergencies that could affect our business and our livelihood. When I first started working with True Voice, I realized that how important it was to ask that environmental question. Because that's the thing that can stifle, stifle people. That's the thing that can mess people up. And most of us, especially as small business owners, don't have a plan. We don't have a rescue valve. We don't have, and no insurance is going to solve us, solve the problem. Insurance is the after the problem process. It's not preventative. 
You know, there's no HMO for your property. <laughs> you know, there's no preventative maintenance. Well, there's preventative maintenance that you should do and you are responsible for. And, and certainly your insurance company is going to hold you responsible for. But you're not going to um, be able to get the benefit of your insurance until you make the claim. And that's until an event has occurred. So you have to make sure that you understand this and thought, think all the way through. So some key ideas that I got from just studying the literature on the environment and, and what, great, what the great ones say. John Keats says, the poetry of the earth is never dead. What I learned from, 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 from Keats is that change is inevitable. It's inevitable and it's going to be something. It could be wild, it could be amazing, it could be uh, tremendous, it could be terrifying. But on the other side of change is hope. So if you have a plan, if you have a plan with some level of thoughtfulness that you've put in place, um, you've, you've assessed the, the needs, uh, the problem, and you've covered it with your all of your stakeholders and everybody agrees that this is the proper way to respond just in case this happens, whatever that this is, right? Fill in the blank. Political, economic, technological, legal, environmental, legislative, right? Think about those things. These are things that can happen. Things can happen in these areas that will make it difficult for you to do business, difficult for you to continue, difficult for you to survive. So do you have plans in place and how you make those plans in place? I'm going to suggest to you that change happens. It's something that is always going to be a factor. Sitting around thinking about getting to a place, even thinking about getting to a place where change doesn't happen is ridiculous. We all want to get to our goals. We all want to get to you know the places where we were achieving at high levels and so on and so forth. But we need to maintain that those, that that momentum. And if we can't maintain that momentum because something traumatic happens and we're not ready, so I, I would always suggest to people, you know, have beliefs. Of course, have you know your your golden principles and things that you were willing to die for. Absolutely. However, always stay open minded and flexible. Because you never know where the best idea is going to come from, especially in your emergency preparedness planning, right? Because you're thinking that you know this this particular kind of storm, you know, a legislative storm could come your way, and you got you powerless to do anything about it. But have you written your senator, your congressman, your local legislators ever? Do you ask them to ask them to, to hear your thoughts and ideas about what they're what they're proposing to the you know, laws they're proposing to change or legislation they put? Do they know that the impact that might happen or might how it might occur to you? Because if they know that, they might make a better a, a better decision. If you know them, if you have a relationship, you might be able to tell them before they even think about it. You might be able to be able to suggest a legislative matter that might make a big difference for small businesses in your industry. So you can't afford not to be involved here. You can't afford not to choose or, or, or just put your head in the sand because, you know, again, tragedy's coming. There's nothing that we can do about that. The big, larger uh, things, they're happening. But we can, you know, make our voices heard. We can make our wishes known and make a direct request to get to where we're trying to get to. But sometimes we gotta know when to leave the table. Sometimes we gotta know when there's just no more negotiating, no more opportunities. And I love this quote by Lear Keith, who wrote The Vegetarian Myth, Food, Justice, and Sustainability. And what he said was, understand the task of an activist is not to negotiate systems of power with as much personal integrity as possible it's to dismantle those systems. I love that quote because it lets you understand that there's sometimes when there is no more discussion, there is no more collaboration, there is no more, it's only time to remove the power that is in front of you. And I'm reminded of the wonderful words from the US Declaration of Independence. And I know what those words mean and I know what they don't mean but I want you to think about them for a second. 
when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth, the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitles them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. Are you ready to declare against tyranny, against oppression, personally, your business, your family? Do you know what's negatively impacting your life or potentially will neg negatively impact your life? This is something that you have to stand up to. Or you're going to pay for not knowing. You're going to pay for not engaging. As it could be costly. Now, it may be something that eh, you don't have to fight because you realize it's no big deal. You change the law, I pay more taxes. Okay, I can handle it. But you have to be in control of things. You have to know what your numbers are. You have to know what your market is doing and how effective your market it, marketing strategy is going to be um, in the case of any type of emergency. Because if you're going to be out of business, you're not going to have any more customers, you're not serving anybody. So nobody is, is, is providing you know, the necessary um, financial income that you're going to need, profits that you're going to need in order to function. How long can you weather the storm? We find that even Franklin Roosevelt knew that knowledge rules. Roosevelt said a nation that destroys its soil destroys itself. Forests are the lungs of our land, purifying the air and giving fresh strength to our people. Roosevelt knew it was important to be smart. It was important to understand and know what's going on, especially to our environment. If you can't figure that out, if you don't understand that, maybe you shouldn't be in business. I hate to tell you, but you've got to function. You've got to understand what's going on in all the various different environments that affect you, um, so you'll know how to prepare yourself just in case the worst happens to your business. I believe totally that the human beings we're decision-making machines, and we can do quite well in almost any circumstance if we're given the knowledge and the education. This turns out to be our best defense, and our best offense in the game of life and business. So let's make sure we're playing the game at a high level. Make sure you're paying attention. You know, find sources of information that could be truthful and honest. Read the economic data and the reports that are coming out about your industry. Know what's going on with your market. You know, know what's affecting them. We moved to a place where we where were having what they what they called a great resignation. Right? It was a time in, a time in recent time in our history, might be still in it, where people are just leaving their corporate jobs left and right. Not being separated, not, not, not being fired. No, they're leaving. They're deciding, opting out on their own. I'm out of here. Moving to a better kind of friendly, friendlier situation in my life, trying to get control of myself. No, I'm not going back to face whatever vestiges of the pandemic are. I'm not going back to do what this is what people are saying. I'm done with the, the mismanagement. I'm done with the, the disrespect. I'm done with the lack of consideration that the company seems to have for its employees. I'm done. People are opting out. So what are they going to do? If they don't go find another job, they're going to have to do what? Start a business. And that is going to be a critically important phase of our step in moving forward. There's gonna be a lot more. In fact, there has been a lot more small business that are start small business that are starting annually recently than the end of time in history. Because people are fed up with the status quo. They want to move things forward. They think they can move things forward in a way that's going to be useful to them. Knowledge rules. The last thing I want to say about this before I start to hopefully answer some questions is that. We all have to be in this thing. We are all in it. There is no escape. John Paul II, 
one of our one of our greatest popes that ever existed in history said, the earth will not continue to offer its harvest except with faithful stewardship. We cannot stay, we cannot say we love the land and then take steps to destroy it for use by future generations. This is true. So it's not just our 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 our, our need to protect ourselves against the worst that can happen. It's our need to invest in the economy, in the political landscape, in the cultural world, in the ecosystem, in the transportation units, in the legislative uh, opportunities, in the technological opportunities. The more we get engaged, the more we invest, the more we can be diligent, the more we can do things, but the more we can fix problems before they become major problems because we have to we can pay attention and we can offer the benefits that that attention gives us. So I want you to stay engaged. I want you to stay organized. I want you to stay thoughtful and mindful of what's going on around you and what's affecting your business. Don't put your head in the sand. Don't disappear. Uh, don't act like there's nothing you can do about it. Because at minimum, if you find a problem in either one of those major six categories I talked about earlier, you can band together with others. And you can make your voice known. But you have to identify the problem. You have to identify the impact. And you have to be willing to face it. Challenge yourself. Challenge others to say, listen, this is a problem. It's affecting me and a group of others just like me. I need somebody to help me fix this. Who can be empowered to help me fix it? If you start asking those kinds of questions, you're going to get all kinds of answers. You're going to get all kinds of responses from the universe. So think about it. What questions do you need to ask? What people do you need to ask them of? And how are you going to make it through? I got a few more minutes and I want to read this last section because you know as everything I do on my training, I always provide some impact and input from the Bible. And the reason why I do this is not just because I'm a Christian, and I am, but it is because I think that 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 book has given us so much information and so many reasons to share so much information that um, has been recorded in history, right? And we have used it to justify, rationalize so much of our behavior and so much of our systems have built on what somebody's interpretation of this thing is. We cannot ignore it. I don't think it would be responsible to do so. So let me share this with you. The Bible says clearly that the earth is ours to run and maintain until God has plans for it. Other plans for it, I should say. We should revel in the opportunity to be the steward of such a wonderful creation and never take it or God for granted. When we pay attention, we will see that God is and always has acted as a perfect model of what we need to do to perform our roles well. All we have to do is follow the script and we will be well on the way to becoming righteous journeymen ourselves. We just need to commit to giving our best always and everything will just work just fine. So pay attention to your employee handbook, the Bible, and look to be proactive in avoiding preventable disasters from taking you out of the game as you do the work that you are called to do. This is Coach Powell. I had a great time. And let me see if there's any if there's any questions in the queue or anything. Else. Nope, there's none. I had a great time, guys. Good to see you guys. Hope you will do this again um, next week. I don't even know what I'm talking about next week, so I can't tell you about it. But pay attention. I'll be posting stuff on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on Facebook. Let you guys know what's going on. Uh, Twitter, posts, all that kind of good stuff. I had a great time. I hope you I hope you did too. Oh, by the way, um, I'm still in a great promotion in June. So if you're look, looking for any type of training or um, uh, educational solutions for yourself or your organization, you need help with that, give me a call. Um, Coach Powell, 703-201-4267. That's 703-201-4267. I look forward to hearing you guys. I had a great time, and I'm out of here. Talk to you later.